Now we've learned how to read the income statement. We've looked at the balance sheet. It's time to turn to the third of the three financial statements, and that's the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement does two things for us. First, it reconciles the income statement to the balance sheet, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. But more importantly, it shows us everything that happened to cash at the airline throughout the quarter, or whatever time period you're looking at. So it's going to show us all of the cash that came into the airline and all of the cash that went out from the airline and what's left at the end of the quarter. And in a way, that's a more important thing to look at than income on the income statement because the income statement has some accounting adjustments in it that tend to cloud the actual performance. And the cash flow statement strips that cloudiness away and gives us a really clear look at the dollars and cents of running the business. So first let me go over to the balance sheet and show you what I mean by this reconciliation. So let me, yeah, so there it is, the, the balance sheet we've been using. Let's take a look at uh, these two quarters. So the fourth quarter of 2012 and the first quarter of 2013. And if you remember when we looked at this balance sheet, the first item that they list under assets is cash. So the cash balance at Southwest Airlines at the end of the fourth quarter of 2012 was $1.113 billion. Three months later, they increased their cash balance to $1.338 billion. That's a $225 million increase in cash. Well, the balance sheet does not tell us where that cash came from. So the question is, how did the airline increase its cash by $225 million? Well, let's take a look at the income statement if we can, and see if we can find our answer there. So the same time period, let's go right down to the bottom line for this second quarter. And we can see that during the first three months of 2013, so at the end of the quarter, the airline reported income, net income of $59 million. So they earned $59 million during the quarter. Well, if they earned $59 million and the cash balance increased by $225 million, then where did the rest of the money come from? Well, obviously, the cash flow statement is the place that we're going to go to find that answer. So let me find the right document. Here it is. So here's the cash flow statement. And let me just go right to the bottom line here and show you this uh, reconciliation. So we're going to start way up here with net income. And the net income from the second quarter, we pulled this right off the income statement. So the, there's that $59 million the airline earned at the end of the second quarter. Then we're going to go through this cash flow statement, and I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll go through a couple of these items to show you what's happening. But there's going to be a bunch of adjustments made to reflect the actual cash activity during the quarter. Then at the bottom of the cash flow statement, we're going to see these three lines here. The net change in cash. So this change in cash, 225. There's the, there's the 225 difference between the two quarters. And all of these items here are what gets us to that 225 difference. And then we just have the balance from the end of the the end of the last quarter or the beginning of this period is 1.113 and then we add that 225 to the 1113 and we get the new cash balance and then that 1338 is placed on the balance sheet and that's how the balance sheet gets its cash balance so the uh, the income statement uh, uh, the income statement is created to calculate net income Net income is then converted into cash, and the cash is placed on the balance sheet. So let's go up and take a look at how we get from net income to cash. There's three sections to the cash flow statement, and we'll pull out one or two items from each. Let's look at this first section here, cash flow from operating activities. You can think of this as being very similar to the section on the income statement that talks about uh, operating income. So you remember from the, let's just go right over there real quick. Uh, the income statement has these 
revenues and expenses from operating the airline. This is you know, the core business of the airline is selling airline tickets and then flying planes. You get revenue from selling tickets and we spend a lot of money uh, getting people to their destination. You subtract the expenses from the revenues and you get an income level. In this case, it's $70 million of operating income. Well, in the cash flow statement, it's examining those same activities, but instead of calculating income, it's calculating the cash from those activities. So we start with the net income that was just uh, calculated at the bottom of the income statement, and then we start making adjustments to get to the cash balance. This first section here is adjustments for non-cash expenses, and then this is for changes in liabilities and assets. So let's take this first one, uh, first section first. And the one we're going to look at here, the example we're going to look at is depreciation and amortization. And let's go back to the income statement. Now, if you viewed that video, the video on it, the income statement, um, I pointed out when we were going through these expenses, this line here. So to calculate the income, the operating income, the airline takes all its revenues and then subtracts all its, all, all its expenses. But we noted that this expense, this $210, excuse me, $210 million of depreciation and amortization is a non-cash expense. This, this is depreciation of assets that were purchased in a prior time period. So the cash that was used to purchase those assets was that transaction occurred at some other time. During this quarter, we're, we're only making an accounting adjustment to, uh, to reflect the depreciation expense. There's no cash going out the door uh, to reflect this $210 million. So in the cash flow statement, if we want to if we want to get back to cash and see what's actually happening in terms of cash during the quarter, we add that back. So we take our fifty nine million dollars of net income, which has already been netted down because of these non cash expenses, and we add the non cash expenses back. So we add the two ten to uh, the two hundred ten million to fifty nine million. Then we're going to make uh, some other adjustments here. Let me go down to this section, changes in certain assets and liabilities. So when an airline, when any company is using the accrual method of accounting, uh, things, you know, accounts receivable and accounts payable are booked at different times from when the uh, cash is actually expended or received. So this section adjust for that timing and the one the one I want to go into as my example is this air traffic liability so we we saw this on the balance sheet right so this air traffic liability is the airline sells a lot of airplane tickets prior to the service being delivered so if people purchase their tickets ahead of time the airline receives the cash and then books that as a liability but they don't actually book the revenue until the, the plane takes off. So this cash is being received at a different time from when it's being reflected on the income statement. So this line is, is, ref, is making that adjustment for the, the different timing that you see on the income statement. So in this case, in the second quarter, the air traffic liability increased by $707 million. So that means they they sold that much more in in revenue than they actually delivered, and that has to do with the seasonality of the airline. So this is actually so cash is increasing, but also a liability is increasing. So you just have to take that into account. And then down here we have the subtotal. So you started with with net income of fifty nine million. You make these adjustments, and at this level our net cash from operating activities is 983. So opposed to the uh, $90 million we saw in operating income, we're actually seeing that the, the airline from its core activities generated $983 million of cash. Okay, so let's just go down and take a couple of items from these next sections. Let me scroll it better there. So the next section is cash flow from investing activities. And investing activities in this context 
are generally primarily capital purchases so it, money that's being put back into the airline either to maintain the airline or to grow the airline then there are some other uh, short-term investments here so uh, the airlines using its cash to in invest in uh, interest-bearing um, uh, devices or so you know so they, they're using cash they're using the cash to generate some some income uh, the probably the more interesting thing that happens here is the uh, payments for purchase of property and equipment this is often labeled as capital expenditures and you can see during this time period the airline spent 534 million dollars of its cash on investing back into the uh, back into the business so you know maybe they were buying airplanes or equipment or maintenance facilities or or buildings so hard assets that will be you know depreciated in the future but are the uh, the cash expenditures during this period and you can see the net here for this quarter was 472 so let me let me make a couple of comments here on these balances uh, if you go into your operating cash flow you're really going to want to see a positive number here you're going to want to see the airline after after you know taking in the revenue from its its core activities and spending the cash needed to uh, provide those services they end up with a positive cash balance this next section you tend to want to see a negative number because it means the airlines using their money to invest back into the business if you were to see a positive number it would tend to be a bad sign because it would mean they're raising cash by selling assets uh, it, or you know that's one 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 example of a bad reason to see that cash balance increasing so when we were looking at the balance sheet and we were looking at the you know the cash balance and the ratios one of the things I said is you really have to know where the cash is coming from if an airline is raising cash by selling assets or raising cash by issuing a lot of debt that's a much different story than uh, creating cash from operations this final section here is cash from financing activities. This is generally related to debt or money they're returning to their investors. So let's take a look here and see what we can see. Payments for long-term debt. So uh, let's see. Payments of long-term debt. Let's see if we can follow this over. Here's a negative number. So in the second quarter, it looks like they, on net, paid down $164 million in debt. So that's a good sign. And then they did some real positive things here. So they spent $15 million on dividends to their investors. They did a, a stock repurchase. Uh, I'm not sure what other net is. Uh, stock purchase plans. So this section, it, it's hard to just say whether it should be positive or negative. It could be a positive number if they're raising a lot of debt. But it depends on what they're ra what they're raising that debt for. Uh, to see you know to see debt payment um, over time is generally a very good thing. Uh, but you do have to take that with a grain of salt. If an airline is raising debt, it could be for a, be a very good reason. So that's all we're going to say about the cash flow statement. So we make all these adjustments. At the end of the day, the airline is adding two hundred twenty-five million dollars to its cash balance. And that's probably a more important figure than just looking at the $59 million of net income. Now, of course, you know, when you're looking over the you know, long term, you need to certainly um, take net income into consideration. But for current quarter activity, cash tends to be a really good indication of performance. And in the next video, we're going to look at a couple of metrics. Uh, so we're only looking at, at the the cash balance well we're, we're looking at the cash that is coming from these different activities in the next section we're going to look at a couple of metrics around free cash flow